Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Wednesday. It is August 9th. This will be our chart lesson for the day, and we got a little bit of movement yesterday, although we didn't have a lot of trades. Today, we didn't really get a lot of movement, but the volume was uh, much higher, and there's a lot more trades. You can see the, the volume here. Let me tighten this up, but you can just see the number of bars we have compared to yesterday. So we had some pretty good volume. We actually had an uptrend, but we're swinging back and forth above and below the EMA. And so you could play this either way. And really, you were better off playing the, um, the range most of the day. Uh, but it did help. If you drew this line off these first few swings here, um, you really, it really wasn't that obvious off these first three but once you get this fourth one uh and if you drug that down uh, your midline fits in there you know almost perfectly so it's set up really well after that and you can see that up through there um, that's a nice two-tiered channel and uh, we did go back and forth across the ema here a little bit later on in the day i think it was a little more obvious and it played out a little clearer but um Really, for the most part, if you traded it like a range, you did okay. Um, the lows kind of moved up here, and the highs moved up a little bit as well. So, But that's because there's really a, a channel working up. But as long as you're swinging back and forth above both sides of the EMA consistently like that all day long, you can still treat that like a range and play it uh, the range rules. And, or actually, I, I wouldn't say so much you play the range rules, but you can trade it both ways. That's the one time where you could have a trend and play it both ways because when it's going back and forth on both sides of the EMA consistently like that, uh, you can trade that like a range. And so uh, I hope that's clear. But let's back out, talk about the trades, and we'll go from there. Uh, first trade I saw, we, we actually had a little trend working down here. Um, you could look at this a couple different ways. I really look at it like so. I believe this, it's a shorter term channel here. And this is the break and you got two measured legs to a new low. And then you just kind of started going sideways here. Uh, somebody else sent me theirs. And you can't argue with that right there as well. Uh, but you never really get it confirmed on the other side very well. Notice that there's no other touches and you really had... It really, um, it didn't play out from there. It tried to make a new low, uh, couldn't quite get it. It just kept going sideways, really. So by the time I came in, we really were working more sideways. Um, you did have this break of this, but I was looking at it more like I showed you the first one. And it really plays out better that way. Um, you can see that channel that trend line and if you, you can draw it both sides and you can see there's a nice little tight channel right there and you got a break two measured legs I mean that's two measured legs down there's leg one there's leg two uh, looks like we missed it by maybe a tick but that's I mean you can eyeball that and see that's basically two measured legs and then we tried to go lower again and um, by that time, you should have had this trend line working up. And this is just really kind of uh, congestion here. Uh, but there is a little short trap. Somebody asked me, uh, they actually went short here and got trapped to the downside. But they were playing that bigger channel, as I showed you. And, um, you know, if you were playing it that way, I could see how you probably could get trapped up there. The only thing is, this is a higher low than this one. And look how much higher your closes are. And so... You don't have a whole lot of room between here and there. Um, I don't think there's room to scalp out. Maybe if you use this low, it's close. But I would have drawn this trend line, and that would have made that look suspect going short into that trend line. And this is where you get these wedge-looking patterns from. Notice how this looks like a wedge. But really what it is, you have a channel up through here, but you're finding resistance here at a certain level, and it can't get above it. And so that's what creates that wedge. But the fact that you're making a higher low here every time leads you to believe that we may break out to the upside. It'd probably be a failure, but that's your clue that, hey, we'll probably go higher right there above those highs because 
the body is getting a little bit stronger, but notice what happens when they push it above. All they did was run everybody's stops, trap a bunch of longs in that, that are taught to go long on the breakout, and then look what they do. They reverse it, and they run everybody out, and then it ends up going right where you thought it was going to go, back up higher. And that's, I mean, that's... I mean, that's the M.O. of the E.S. to fool you into entering the wrong way and, you know, all the way they teach you to trade. Uh, you need to almost do just the opposite. But uh, anyway, if you went short here, this was the, really the first trade of the day right in here. Um, this is really just a first entry, so that's one reason to be a little bit leery of that. It is a lower high, but notice you got a new low and you get a first entry. And so your second entry is right here. And so you get another new low. So that's a first entry. Um, you could treat that like, um, well, you can't even really treat that. You could almost say, well, there's one entry long and then there's a second entry, but you're, here's your new high here. So it's not even really a second entry long. Uh, I think that's the way the trader was playing it as a failed second entry long. And that's not really a second entry long, so uh, so it's just a, it's just a first entry short because you got a new low that's lower than that one, so it's just a first entry. So you would have probably wanted to wait till here on the second entry before you went short. If you'd waited on that one, it would have worked, but I don't like going short there because it looks like you got a trend line working up. Uh, you do get a lower high here. You could really treat that like a double. Uh, test of this high right here but you don't have a whole lot of room here I, you know the, the more I think about it you probably could give that make that one green um, that trend line really scares me away from it uh, I'll mark it as green but there's your second entry short and that's really your failed second entry long right there because this is a double top that's a new high so pull back first entry pull back second entry and it's technically not a failure, but it, since it didn't go any further than these highs and double test, you could treat that like a failed second entry long. Um, but notice what happens. You get a double top. You got a new high. Pull back first entry. Pull back uh, second entry. And then you get that little trap there. It looks like it's going to be a failed second entry long. And all it does is trap people to the short side again. And I like going long right there because you're looking for a retest of this high. So you're probably going to at least test this right here. And uh, it ends up going a little bit higher. But this is a failed break higher. Again, there's a little trap there. Uh, you're not real far away from the EMA. But the fact that you got to close outside this trend line, a move to a new high, a failed break higher, a nice bearish bar, a little bit away from the EMA, I like that one. You don't know that it's going to go all the way down here. But you should get a scalp out of that just coming back to the EMA at the very least. So it does it end up coming all the way down uh, you never get a break of that trend line and that's very bearish so I, you need to wait on a reversal pattern here and that doesn't come till here but notice this low first entry you push right through the EMA no real resistance second entry it fails and uh, so I like going long right there just looking forward to test that high and maybe test that one and it actually goes to the second one and turns straight down then uh, you get a close outside here but it's not necessarily a convincing one. And then this just this pattern right here almost replays this whole setup right here. Um, you come down off a double top and you get that little fake uh, move lower. Uh, but I don't like going long here because at this point you're really looking at this like a trading range. Um, you, you really could start to see this line here by this point um, you've got one two three four touches and if you drag it down but you don't have any touches down here and uh, at this point you don't really have a whole lot of um, reference in the middle here uh, you're just starting to get that here so um, really what this turn this is a double bottom so that's a failed second entry short um, and because you don't really have a know that you've got a convincing close outside that looks pretty close but there's a lot of people that have probably figured that this may retest this high but the main thing is this is kind of in the middle and so until you get this revert you actually get a reversal pattern right here but I still wasn't convinced because that's more sideways stuff but when it tried to go lower again and failed 
Um, I like riding this back up to see if it's going to test this high again. Uh, that's just too many failures to the downside. And by that time, most everybody's going to figure, hey, we're probably going higher. If you can't go lower, you're eventually going higher. And um, you could probably argue for that one to be green right there because um, that is your reversal pattern. But I just didn't, I still don't think you had enough evidence here because this is right in the middle of what looks like a range. And that's where you got to be really, really careful because they'll trick you. And it looked like they did trick everybody for a minute here. Um, and, but it ends up continuing to go higher. And here you're too close to the highs. You're not going to enter right there. Uh, in fact, I like uh, entering on the breakup because now you've got a close outside this channel. You got two legs up to a new high. There's multiple swings in this first leg. But if you look, there's a leg. And then there's your second leg. And that's a perfect two legs up measured move. There's just two legs in that leg. And then there's a couple of legs in that one too. Um, but that's really two moves up to a two perfect to the tick measured moves. So I like risking that with the short side. Generally, you want to wait on a lower high, which comes here. And you can see how it's back inside that resistance and it's holding and you get a big bearish bar. And, uh, and then you finally get your reversal pattern here. But that's a double test of that as well, another bearish bar. And then you get one more attempt to go higher. And that's just a, another trap to the upside. And I really thought we'd come all the way back down to this, to here, or maybe even all the way down to here. But since we couldn't get back down there, it could be that this trend line is just right here like so. But that would lead to a, your break here. You get a break down here either way and then a move back to test a new high before the close. So it doesn't matter how you saw it uh, other than this midline might have helped you a little bit in here. You can see that midline right through there. Um, in fact, that might have hurt you more than anything because it may have made you a little bit more tempted to go long here. But really what you had to be aware of was that oh, was that resistance. It's acting as support and resistance. And to go long, you have to go long right into it. Um, and coming short, you really do too, but that's after multiple t attempts to go higher when you should be headed down to the other side on a range day. And even if it's a channel, you just came off the high, so you should be headed to the other side. So... Um, that's why I like entering short there. And really that was all that you could, you, you don't want to be getting long down here. Um, and you can't be getting short right into this possible trend line right here. So, um, so I didn't see anything else I liked. You don't get another reversal pattern till here and notice it would have worked great, but, uh, I didn't mark that one because it was after two o'clock but um, that was a night nice, actually your reversals right here and but generally you want your reversal to set up on a trend line or the EMA if you draw this trend line you can see um, well you might could argue for it to be a little tighter like that this is going to be it though you can see how that matches up the rest of the day And that also will match up off the other side. Notice how perfectly that fits. You get a little bit of an overshoot right here. But if you try to make this first one fit, you can't really, well, it still, it still fits slightly right in there. So... I could see why somebody might like it that way, but in the end, by the end of the day, you want it to fit neatly in there, and you can see that fits a whole lot better right up through there. And every time you came back to that line, it shot higher. So just keep that in mind. Um, sometimes it can be really close. I'm going to draw this one more time. So yeah, if you saw that... Um, might be tempted to go long there and if you did if you had your tick your stop one tick lower you got stopped out there um, but
but that's after three o'clock, so that's reason I didn't look at it that closely earlier. So hopefully you, you didn't get fooled there. That's one reason I don't like. It just seems like there are more um, fake outs and stuff in the afternoon, and it it's always seems to me, it may just be my imagination. I, I don't really have any. People ask me this from time to time. I always, I prefer trading in the morning. It just seems like there's a lot less issues and fake outs. It's just to me, it seems like the price rate, price action is easier to read. Um, and like I said, I've never gone back and done any test of back testing or anything like that. I don't believe in all that back testing. Uh, I've never done anything like that to so that I actually have the data in front of me to prove what I'm saying. But to me. It seems like there's more failures after two o'clock and more fake outs and traps and things like that. So that's why I tend to like to stop trading after two o'clock. And I prefer trading before lunchtime, to be honest with you, because it gets real slow during lunch sometimes. Okay, my video just ended suddenly there, like I hit the stop button. I'm not sure if I accidentally bumped something or what, but. I didn't get a chance to really sign off and wrap the day up, but uh, uh, just in hindsight, you really almost play, if you played this like a range day, you probably would have done just as well as anything else using the short-term trend lines. Um, in fact, I think you would have done better because that would have kept you in the shorts off these highs. And really what happened was the range just moved up as the day went on, and you can see that. Uh, the lows were more across this 24.63, and the highs just kind of moved up here a little bit as well. And um, these were all just failed break, breaks higher. So really, if you traded it range light, you did a much, but you would have done. It would have been much easier because if you're using this channel, which it came in handy in some small instances, but if you're using just the channel, you might have been more tempted to go long in here than short because you're bouncing off that midline. And uh, unless you saw this as the lows, and I can't say that that's not the lows of the range. It's just not very, it, it, this line is real clear here. But where the lows are is not very clear. Um, what is clear is the range across here. This sort support resistance and this support and this support here. So in my opinion, you were better off trading, trading it by the range and just moving this up as the day went on as well because later on your support was just right up here a little higher. And um, you'd have been better off that way than trying to figure out where the trend line was on the channel and where the lows were and that kind of thing. So I hope that makes, I hope that's clear, but I did want to clarify that before I signed off today and I accidentally uh, somehow signed off a little bit earlier. So I'm just coming back and adding this on at the end, but I'm going to wrap it up. Um, but you can see how much clearer that looks when you take that channel off. Uh, just use these shorter term trend lines and it's relatively clear. So, um, you know, you want to get short off these highs and you know, you want to get long off these lows here. And that would have actually got you in this long without any problem, most likely here. Um, because you got, you got this big bullish bar coming right off those lows again. And, um, you actually get a little lower high. So you could have entered one tick above that, or you could have waited on this bar. Of course, that's after two o'clock, but. I wouldn't have been afraid to enter right here, most likely, other than the fact that's a fairly large bar. Uh, what you might do is let it break higher and come back in here. And you could have gotten filled all the way back to about 2464, probably when it came back here before going higher. So that's something else to think about, too, that uh, by playing at a range, uh, this helped you a little bit more down here as well. So I just think you'd be better off playing it as a range today. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow and wrap up our week. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.